how y'all be doing? <laughs> I'm feeling myself. <laughs> so, um, let's say we're going to use this as an example. Um, you are, you have a job, right? And your supervisor targets you. Okay, let's put it like that. Let's say that your supervisor just incessantly targets you and they switch up on you every other day. One minute they're nice, the next minute they're mean. One minute they're nice, the next minute they're mean, right? And the reason because of that is, number one, they want to destroy your confidence. First of all, you need to understand that they low-key love you, darling. <laughs> they just have no spine, you see. They are a hater. They want what you got, which is self-esteem, worth, confidence in who you are and who you're going to be, period. And their job is all that they have, you see. So at work, this is how they feel good, right? They tear you down. So they, they do, they feel good by being able to be superior to you, by making you walk on eggshells, by making you not know what, which way to go, which way is Sunday, right? Um, they never tell you good job, right? They always point out your flaws, right? This type of person, you need to understand that they want what you got. <laughs> <laughs> they want your confidence. They want your self-esteem. They want the way that you walk into the room and the whole entire atmosphere changes. The in complete energy of the room changes when you walk into it. And everyone notices, darling. They want what you got. Right? And they know they don't have it and never will, you see. And so the issue is, all that they have is that measly position with that measly title, and that's it. That's all they'll ever have. That is their world. They have no plans beyond that title. That's it. That's what their life consists of. Do you understand what I'm saying? So... When they tear others down, it makes them feel better about themselves. It makes them feel better about who they are. It makes them feel a little bit more pompous, right? A little bit bigger, it inflates their ego. They hate, if you are a guy, they hate that you can go into a room and all the girls love you. They all want to talk to you. They all say your name when you walk by, call you over, ask you something ridiculous which you know they probably know the answer to they just called you over to speak with you right if you're a girl the same way if your boss is a girl they hate that the guys call you over that they want to talk to you that they want to speak with you that they want to ask you a question and not them you see they hate that your co-workers look up to you ask you for advice, ask you, you know, how to do things. They absolutely detest it. And that is why they call you out, darling. Every single time they call you out. If they can find any little bitty, itty, 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 bitty thing, they will call you out on it. Trust and believe that. They will make sure it is known that you have made a mistake and that everyone knows it. Now, if someone else that is not quite as confident, that does not have the essence or the presence that you carry, <sighs> does something, it is swept under the rug. No big deal. Ta-ta now. Now I know these things can absolutely irritate you, darling, but don't worry, you're just a hater creator. <laughs> blaze a trail, blaze a trail, because you're going, going places. You're doing things, correct? You're making life happen for you, right? And this person, all they have 
is their title. Forever. <laughs> you have to look at the heart condition. Immediately, I want you to put on Arbor's eyes. And I want you to do an x-ray on the chest, my darling. Inside, they are hurting. Something absolutely miserable happened to them as a child, darling, and they never healed. They never healed from it. And the only way that they ever felt somewhat decent or some type of kind of, of, of important being, right, was by stomping on others beneath them. Because it gave them a sense of power, right? Because people like this, power is everything. Having power, being at the top, and being able to, uh, you know, cut others down is what they live for, you see. And they target you, my dear, because you are absolutely fantastic. And they'll never be you. And they know this in their heart of hearts. And so this is why you have to pray for them, you see. This is why you have to get on your knees and get out of the way and ask Abba to do heart surgery on them. Because believe you me, he will. And when you do this, it is like pouring red hot coals over their head. I know, I can hear you already. But Spirit Owl, Spirit Owl, why should I pray for them? Why? They pick on me. They target me. Every little thing. They're making my life a living hell at work. Why should I do anything nice for them? My darling, look at it this way. You have to be an extremely miserable human being to look constantly for the flaws in others in order to point them out. On the inside, you must be extremely broken and have almost no self-esteem if you must constantly tear others down in order to be filled up. <laughs> so know that blessed are you. So know that blessed are you, darling, and take pity on your adversary because you have already won. <laughs> Regardless, you have already won. <laughs> Take pity on them, my darling, and pray for them so that their heart chakra might open and remain that way, because obviously it's closed. And have you ever lived your life with a closed heart chakra? If you have, then you will know why you will pray for them because it is such a miserable existence. Next time your supervisor is snappy with you, bosses you around, embarrasses or humiliates you in front of everyone on purpose, correct? Right? They do it on purpose. You know they do it on purpose, right? <laughs> do yourself a favor and smile. <laughs> Giggle. <laughs> under your breath <laughs> pray for them while you stare at them with your mind as they tear you down look them directly in the eye and speak to them through telepathy tell them I know you are broken I know you are sad I know what happened to you as a child. And if you do not know, if you have not been given whatever insight that you might need, just, just telepathically share with them, I know that you are a broken, small child in the corner in the dark, naked, crying. And that is why you must be so big and act this way in front of me. And I pray for you. I pray for your healing. And I send you love. And I transmute all this energy that you sent my way into good. 
And in this way, you can't go wrong. And remind yourself, darling, they are intimidated by you. In every way. And that if they weren't targeting you, then you would just be normal, like all the other people that work there. This should be confirmation to you that you are indeed set apart and on your way to your life purpose. You see, you are irritating their demons. <laughs> and that's your job. So you're right on target. Blaze a trail, my wisdom keeper. Oh, and one last thing. Let's say you were, you know, you have to wear scrubs to your job or something like this. This is just an example. And um, on the weekend, you're allowed to wear regular clothing, right? And you never wear regular clothing, but one day you decide to wear jeans, right? The next day, I can almost promise you can figure out exactly who has been a little bit of a hater <laughs> or um, someone who you cannot exactly trust, right? Um, not always, not in every circumstance, but you can tell who you are influencing for sure, for, 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 on the clock, because those people will be wearing jeans. <laughs> and there will be many.